Good morning, everyone. It is my great pleasure and indeed a great honor to visit uh, Badul Hospital virtually from Melbourne. My sincere gratitude to Dr. Chaminda Gamage, UA Clinical Society President, uh, and Dr. Chaminda, sorry, Dr. Halahakon, Dammika Halahakon, organizing uh, this to happen today. My sincere gratitude to all of the Council, UA Clinical Society, and all of you who are here gathered physically as well as virtually at as it is uh, quite necessary for us to get together as a medical community and learn from one another specifically during this uh, unprecedented time. Of course uh, we live in the middle of a pandemic uh, and sadly the lack of uh, scientific basis uh, and lack of uh, wisdom is uh, causing our task uh, as uh, physicians uh, and healthcare workers to deliver the best uh, healthcare to our patients uh, as best as possible. The only way to combat this uh, is uh, through proper education. Therefore, my sincere gratitude uh, again for Uwe Clinical Society to pulling this together despite the hardships uh, that we are facing. It is my task uh, to share a few thoughts uh, about clinical pearls uh, in the context of uh, management of acute migraine. Given the time allocated, I thought uh, I would not uh, talk about chronic migraine today. However, proper management of acute migraine lead to prevention of chronic migraine that is going to offer to 3% that is going to occur to 3% of acute migraine patients at the conclusion of this presentation i hope we should be able to educate ourselves and eventually our patients and peers to recognize migraine as a complex neurological disorder and avoid pitfalls of misdiagnosis. I hope we would walk away from this talk by being able to keep remembering at least three acute migraine treatment options from preferably three different classes. We would also learn the importance of maintaining a headache diary. We would also learn how to design a tailored stratified treatment plan to the individual patient depending on the individual patient needs. We would also touch upon the importance of tools such as HIT-6, MIDAS, MTOC type questionnaire. Most importantly, we would walk away from this place, if not you are already today, to be an effective, authentic advocate for proper care in migraine as well as rest of the other brain disorders. So you might wonder, why should we care about migraine in the middle of a pandemic uh, while uh, there are a whole lot of uh, other disorders? Well, migraine is indeed the leading cause of adult disability, working class, uh, all over the world and certainly in Australia across all age groups affecting just over 6 million people which is just over one third of the population. This is not much different in Sri Lanka also when I look at a global burden of disease data set. Globally we have just over 1 billion people suffering from migraine. The economic cost of this is enormous. However, migraine continue to be neglected, misdiagnosed, mismanaged, even by neurologists, even by neurologists in Australia, while we have just over 300 neurologists to look after just over 23 million people. It is important to remember that proper management of acute migraine is critically important to reduce disability posed by migraine. Migraine is a complex brain disorder. It's not in your mind. It is a bona fide uh, legitimate medical disorder 
which is complex uh, and treatment of migraine whether it is acute migraine or chronic migraine must be individualized uh, and tailored to the patient's uh, clinical features and clinical needs. Clinicians such as us, uh, we should make uh, full use of available medications in a stratified manner. I have written a lot uh, about this topic uh, and this was endorsed uh, by the recently concluded World uh, Health Assembly 73rd concluded in late November which is the official arm of World Health Organization. So the 80% of the disability uh, worldwide is coming from four neurological disorders and one of them is uh, indeed uh, migraine. So let's get to a case. Let me introduce you to Shanti. Shanti at present uh, 26 years of age she noticed that she was experiencing headaches uh, around one to three headache days per month. Uh, notice the way that I am telling this story. I am talking about headache days. One to three headache days per month, uh, mostly around her period. And usually her headaches uh, responded well to simple analgesics uh, such as paracetamol or ibuprofen for that matter. Few years down the track, uh, when she was about 19 years uh, of age, she noticed that she was experiencing three to four headache days per month. Uh, these headaches uh, were associated with nausea. There was uh, sensitivity to light and noise. Each headache uh, would last at least for 12 hours. Uh, even after one gram of uh, paracetamol, ibuprofen 400 milligram uh, twice daily uh, for several days per month uh, there wasn't uh, uh, a way of uh, getting rid of them uh, in time when she was about uh, 24 years of age now she was experiencing 12 headache days per month again associated with nausea light and noise sensitivity headaches lasting now at least uh, for about 16 hours uh, and there was associated neck pain and neck discomfort, uh, depression, anxiety and her painkillers usage at this point of time is up to 10 days per month uh, and she would take uh, triptan, things such as sumatriptan, at least uh, 6 days per month as well. So when she came to see us, she was 26 years of age, uh, there was rarely a headache free day now. So almost every day is a headache day. At least 10 of her headache days were severe headache days and her analgesic usage and migraine specific medication usage such as triptan has gone up to 25 days per month. So almost every day she would take painkillers or medication such as triptan. So let me ask a question now. What do you think Shanti's diagnosis is? 1. Stress headaches 2. Venous sinus thrombosis 3. Depression 4. High pressure headaches 5. Chronic migraine, medication overuse headaches and other comorbidities I'll give you about half a minute for you to think about this. So what do you think the answer is? So the answer is uh, number five. She has uh, 25 headache days per month, uh, at least uh, 20 severe headache days. Uh, there is uh, nausea and light sensitivity with severe headaches, uh, frequent acute medication use, uh, ibuprofen daily for neck pain and headaches, uh, oral sumatriptan 50 milligram daily for up to 12 to 14 days per month, uh, significant symptoms uh, of depression and anxiety. Her sleep is all over the shop with very poor sleep, no regular physical exercise, uh, currently in the second year of PhD with a very supportive boyfriend and family otherwise. So she has uh, features suggestive of uh, migraine, chronic migraine, medication overuse, headache uh, and a whole lot of uh, comorbidities. We nominate something as a comorbidity when there are two disorders uh, above and beyond chance association. So how do you tailor acute treatment uh, to a person like uh, Shanti? 
treatment of uh, headache uh, is really an incremental process uh, when you deal with uh, a patient with headache uh, first thing is uh, to rule out uh, any secondary headache syndrome this uh, you would uh, do by taking a proper history and doing a proper examination and if necessary conducting investigations so one of the good way to remember secondary headache causes are uh, if you the go through uh, the mnemonic uh, snoop for i'll come to that if we have time to educate you on this uh, then that's a sort of good way to remember secondary headache causes then once you exclude that uh, you have to identify the specific primary headache syndrome you should always ask is there a particular syndrome is it a migraine with aura is it a migraine without aura is it a chronic migraine is there a component of medication overuse headache so on and so forth actively look for associated comorbidities such as depression anxiety chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia educate the patient with regard to importance of headache diaries and disability assessment also you must demystify migraine also we need to recognize the unmet needs of the patient uh, uh, by reviewing her prior treatment uh, uh, and then uh, be prepared to switch treatment uh, uh, such as treatment route uh, class of medication dose of medication so on and so forth migraine disability assessment uh, is a good way to measure disability that is posed by these headaches this is really trying to get an idea about how disabling these headaches are so it's not basically rocket science you just ask from them looking back uh, over last 3 months uh, how many days uh, do you think uh, that you would have miss uh, work or school because of your headaches when i say miss work or school this doesn't necessarily mean not attending to work or school it is uh, something to do with performance uh, also on how many days uh, was your productivity at work or school reduced by half or more because of your headaches on how many days uh, did you not do household work uh, such as housework home repairs maintenance shopping caring for children relatives because of your headaches and then you ask uh, the productivity reduction at least by 50%. Lastly, you ask from them how many days did you miss your family social or leisure activities because of your headaches during last 3 months. So really you are looking at the inability to attend to work or school or inability to attend simple day-to-day -day chores or simple life leisure activities because of headaches. so as i the reminded you before think in terms of days with disability uh, if the level of disability is uh, well over 21 days uh, of uh, really bad days uh, with regard to reduced performance and not being able to attend to these things uh, then that's a patient with uh, severe disability So we also introduce uh, Shanti about the concept of uh, two page office visit uh, office in the sense uh, the coming and seeing us in the clinic uh, so you ask uh, her to maintain a one page headache diary and uh, one page medication list not 50 pages uh, so each uh, page uh, you would have uh, highest dose of any medication that was prescribed by any other doctors and length of treatment uh, and three main adverse effects So by doing that uh, she is showing to me how disabling her headaches are and what has worked what has not worked uh, whether uh, there was a decent effort uh, in in past uh, treatment So spend some time uh, trying to demystify migraine so basically uh, in uh, my consulting room uh, I basically pull out a powerpoint slide uh, on the left hand side uh, showing a cartoon of a brain with a slight uh, small red box uh, in it uh, on the right hand side uh, i have a big uh, storm uh, the image of a big storm 
Then I tell the patient that your brain is a biological computer with more wires than stars in the galaxy. Length of these wires are basically similar to traveling around the planet Earth four or five times. There are about 10 trillion chemical connections among these wires which helps both you and me to be who we are. And the migraine, the problem is uh, we are genetically made to this world to generate either changes in electricity or chemical activity, generating wide variety of symptoms. It is not only a pain or not a pain, pain is just one symptom. Uh, and then I sort of show her that because I also suffer from migraine, I tell them that uh, my, my migraine at the moment uh, is like this uh, little red box in the brain. So it is under reasonable control for the most part. Whereas in your case, because you have more than 26 headache days per month for number of months, it is like a storm. So the idea is for you to move from that storm to put that into this small box model. So use hand, hand gestures, use the four faces of migraine uh, that you will see in a cartoon very soon, prodome or acute attack, postdrome, etc. And then the, get the patient to explain this uh, the the concept back to you to see whether the patient has got the message or not and then you introduce the acute treatment uh, clinical goal which i come to in a moment so these are the four phases of uh, migraine if you wanted to know more uh, we have done a migraine movie a few years back uh, if you google uh, migraine biggest disability australia and my name you would see this uh, movie it is available through youtube if you can't find it uh, if you uh, go to migrainefoundation.org.au website uh, which i posted on my first slide as the web address uh, the i have posted this youtube link there also you are more than welcome to join our Migraine Foundation and uh, the global, uh, the special interest group that I chair for World Federation of Neuro Rehabilitation. Become a member, it's free and you have access to all these things uh, uh, also. So the phases of migraine, uh, the, the four, the, you get prodrome first, uh, anything from few hours to few days. Uh, visual or other aura occurs in about 15 percent of patients this would last uh, anything from 5 to 60 minutes uh, and then typical migraine attack lasting 4 to 72 hours and post drum 24 to 48 hours i have discussed this at length uh, in sri lankan national television few years back uh, i believe they are also available in youtube uh, uh, and uh, you are very welcome to encourage your patients to watch them. I spent two hours explaining these things uh, in uh, very simple lay terms. So the idea is uh, if you are treating a migraine attack, uh, you really need to treat them around here, uh, preferably during prodrome or aura. It is interesting to look at this uh, cartoon this is where the myth that uh, drinking red wine or eating cheese uh, or eating chocolate, uh, whether it is uh, Candos or Cadbury or any other variety, gives rise to migraine attack. Nine out of ten, this is uh, a myth. That is because as a result of the prodrome, most migraine patients, when their brain is already sick, they get food cravings. So they go and either drink uh, wine or cheese, eat uh, cheese or chocolate uh, if, if they can uh, access them. And then few hours later they get uh, migraine attack. So they didn't get migraine attack uh, because of uh, the red wine or chocolate uh, or cheese. Uh, they got that, uh, they had the food craving as part of the illness uh, rather than it causing the, uh, it is leading to the illness. There are very occasional patients, uh, they can be triggering factors, uh, but 90% of the time it is the part of the illness uh, rather than the cause. Uh, interesting. I have uh, had uh, patients with uh, very disabling post lasting for days to weeks even, inability to concentrate, uh, significant fatigue, brain fog, reduced mood, uh, euphoric mood or lack of comprehension or disorientation sometimes. Uh, you can see how disabling migraine can be. 
So this is uh, one of my headache diaries as you can see it capture everything headache severity symptomatic medications uh, preventative medications that they take if you want to have a copy shoot me an email and i'll send you a copy i told you that i introduce uh, the acute uh, treatment uh, goal uh, the apologies uh, the uh, manage to the leave the word uh, tanya here uh, the rather than shanti so the the acute treatment uh, goal is uh, i want shanti to be pain free in two hours uh, from the onset of pain and i want uh, her to be pain free the next day morning so sustained pain free response is uh, you want your patient to be pain free in two hours from the onset of the pain when they take the acute medication you want your patient to be pain free the next day morning also so these are the clinical goals of uh, be treating any patient with acute attack of uh, migraine by doing so you are actually avoiding them going into chronic migraine and medication overuse headache also so that's the headache uh, impact uh, questionnaire or hit tool it's a very simple questionnaire to remember when you have headaches how often is the pain severe never really sometimes very often always uh, how often do headaches limit your ability to do usual day-to-day -day activities including housework work school or social activities when you have a headache how often do you wish you could uh, lie down in the past four weeks how often have you felt too tired to do work or daily activities because of your headaches uh, in the past four weeks uh, how often have you felt fed up or irritated because of your headaches in the past how often the headaches limit your ability to concentrate work or daily activities so the highest score that one can get is from hit 6 is 78 midas is 80 so the midas is actually more than 80 but these were the scores of the shanti and tanya both the hit 6 uh, 74 uh, midas uh, 80 basically showing that uh, she was having uh, the disabling headaches migraine treatment op optimization questionnaire is another useful tool to the recognize unmet needs uh, very easy to pick up uh, side effects is your medications well tolerated functional response are you able to quickly return to your normal activities uh, after taking your medications uh, onset and consistency can you count on your medications to relieve your pain within 2 hours for most attacks just one dose of your medication usually relieve your headaches and keep it away from at least 24 hours the 24 hour pain freedom are you com comfortable enough uh, in global sense to be able to plan your activities uh, if the answers are no to mtok most of the time then there are a whole lot of uh, uh, the unmet needs uh, as you can see so what do you do with uh, Shanti next? Uh, treat her with Botox or botulinum toxin, send her to physiotherapist for neck physiotherapy, prescribe uh, propanolol, migraine prevention, refer her to a different neurologist or a headache specialist, uh, reassess prior treatment, unmet needs and treatment goals more closely. So think about that, uh, the, what the answer is going to be. There's only one answer that is uh, going to be correct in this point of time although you might uh, come to other things uh, later on so her current treatment is paracetamol ibuprofen uh, sumatriptan and sandomigran as the preventative medication her unmet needs are she has no idea about sustained pain free response uh, and it is unsuccessful if there is such uh, and there is no consistent relief uh, there is no functional response and low recurrence uh, so the treatment goal is restore function and sustained pain free response uh, clinical goal to be achieved so the most of the, the the important things are educating the patient and demystifying migraine from my previous slide in her case so the evidence-based treatment options for migraine acute migraine you can use paracetamol non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications uh, combination therapy uh, I would uh, basically use a slightly higher dose uh, as fast as possible, as best as possible. You could use uh, dihydroogotamine uh, migraine specific medications uh, uh, such as uh, the different varieties of triptan and naproxen, uh, ibuprofen. Again, you use a slightly higher dose uh, as fast as possible to achieve sustained pain-free pain -free response. So the triptan, just be careful in the case of uh, hypertension, 
ischemic heart disease, uh, multiple cardiovascularis factors, uh, be aware of uh, some of the side effects, uh, nausea, flushing, chest pain, tingling, dizziness, warmth, etc. Antiemetics uh, and ergotamine, uh, the, those are level B for acute migraine treatment, useful nonetheless. Uh, level C, uh, there are a whole lot of uh, the anti-epileptic drugs uh, uh, that you can use as acute therapy in intravenous form in particular. Uh, I'm not a big fan of opioids in migraine. They lead to medication overuse headache. I would avoid them as best as uh, you can. You can use uh, steroid uh, or lignocaine or celecoxib or ketorolac, lopromacine, IM or IV uh, for acute treatment also, although the level of evidence is not strong. We do use them uh, still occasionally. So the acute treatment plan, the initial treatment, second line treatment, rescue treatment, choose wisely, choose the appropriate route, uh, choose the appropriate dose, trail of the trail of the treatment uh, uh, for uh, the Shanti or the, the Tanya, whoever the patient that you're dealing with. And then the demist by migraine, encourage one page headache diary, explain about the importance of non-pharmacological intervention, good sleep, hydration, regular walks, uh, avoiding triggers, uh, addressing medication use, uh, uh, and uh, choosing a migraine specific medication as best as possible to tailor her needs. So when there is allodynia, you can't even hug uh, your, your patients. Uh, so the, the, the nasal sprays of triptan and injections and suppositories can be useful when there is nausea uh, the, the also in some of these patients. As I said before, Acute migraine is all about switching, uh, the, be prepared to switch uh, the medications. Uh, so we diagnosed uh, Shanti as having a chronic migraine medication, overuse headache, and we managed to demystify her migraine and take uh, caffeine and codeine over-the-counter medications out. Uh, we encourage her to improve her physical activity. We encourage her to meditate, mindfulness-based intervention, sleep hygiene tips. Uh, we use some of the non-prescription medications such as magnesium, vitamin B2, uh, as they have good uh, migraine preventative aspects. Uh, she bought two cats, uh, joined the yoga class, uh, and uh, the, she is going pretty well at this point of time. So at present, uh, the, uh, the still uh, 10 headache days per month, uh, but 90% success with sustained pain-free response. Uh, rescue therapies were not needed. Uh, there's still a little bit of work to do with depression and anxiety. Midas improve from 80 to 30. So always remember the patient that we are treating migraine, not just the headache. We want to keep things in the little box, not the big box. Uh, we do this by treating early, treating well, and treating appropriately. And always remember reduction of disability is important uh, with sustained pain-free response. Uh, as I said, uh, it is very important for us to be the best uh, authentic advocate for migraine and headache disorders and patients. So I again warmly welcome you to join us uh, with Migraine Foundation and join us with the uh, Migraine Special Interest Group for World Federation of Neuro Rehabilitation also. Thank you very much uh, and be safe uh, and take care and uh, continue your good work uh, and we are uh, ever grateful for looking after people at Uwe province which is indeed my hometown.